their money and they put me out in front of the cameras and tell me what to say and that's what I'd say. Wow. <laughs> I took their money and they put me out in front of the cameras and told me what to say. That's what I'd say. Wow. Wow. We've gathered here today to pay homage to the children that are being aborted in this abortuary. We're doing this because abortion is wrong. And I, as the former Jane Roe of Roe vs. Wade, do regret signing the affidavit for the pro-abortion camps. And that was probably about it. It was all an act. Yeah. I did it well, too. I am a good actress. Of course, I'm not acting now. I did it well, too. That, that really hurts because... Jakes. <laughs> it's big stakes. It's all just really big stakes. I had never heard her say anything like this. Never. But I know what we were doing. And there were times I was sure she knew. And I wondered, is she playing us? What I didn't have the guts to say was, because I know damn well we're playing her. What we did with Norma was highly unethical. The jig is up. Now to that ABC News exclusive. Abortion rights rallies held nationwide over the weekend as Roe versus Wade faces perhaps its biggest challenge in the Supreme Court session beginning this morning. And we're going to hear from the woman known as Baby Roe speaking to our Lindsay Davis. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning to you, Robin. Good to see you all. This is a woman who has carried just an incredible burden for decades. Something that Shelley Thornton says she has tried to ignore, but it just won't go away. She has felt that people would blame her for the actions of Jane Roe, her biological mother, whose lawsuit gave women the right to have an abortion. A lot of people didn't know that I existed. For decades, she's been known simply as Baby Roe. Now, at 51 years old, Shelley Thornton is breaking her silence, talking exclusively to ABC News in her first broadcast interview. Your mere conception brought about arguably the most controversial Supreme Court ruling in history. Mm -hmm. What's the impact on you now? It's, it doesn't revolve around me. I wasn't the one who, like, created this law. I'm not the one who created this movement. Her biological mother was Norma McCorvey, a.k.a. Jane Rowe, a cleaning woman from Katy, Texas. Her desire to terminate that pregnancy caused Norma to file a lawsuit against the state of Texas. She never did have that abortion, and by the time the Supreme Court ruled in her favor in 1973, the baby had already been adopted and was two and a half years old. My whole thinking is that, oh God, everybody's going to hate me because everyone's going to blame me for abortion being legal. What kind of weight was that burden for you to carry that for so many years? I feel that it was always hard for me to form relationships with people because I, I felt like I was always holding something back. I still carry that. Um, and I probably always will. There have been several challenges to the ruling but none as serious as recent legislation passed in Texas, effectively banning most abortions. This morning, a new Supreme Court term is set to begin, and the constitutional right of a woman getting an abortion will largely rest in the hands of a conservative majority on the bench. And tonight we'll get into that abortion debate. You'll also hear Shelley talk about a fear that she still has about people on both sides wanting to use her as the face of their movement. We'll also introduce you to a sister that she never knew she had, wow. another child that Norma had given up for adoption. What was it like sitting down with her? Oh, man, you know what? It, you, she's really compelling. Mm. 
Mm. And, and you really feel for her. That she talks about how this still weighs on her. She never met Norma. We're going to talk about that tonight. It, it is really fascinating. Did they use you as a trophy? Of course. I was the big fish. I was the big fish. Do you think they would say that you used them? Well, I think it was a mutual thing. You know, I took their money and they put me out in front of the cameras and told me what to say. And that's what I'd say. Wow. <laughs> I took their money and they put me out in front of the cameras and told me what to say. That's what I'd say. You just have to flood a country's public square with enough raw sewage. You just have to raise enough questions, spread enough dirt, plant enough conspiracy theorizing that citizens no longer know what to believe. Once they lose trust in their leaders, in mainstream media, in political institutions, in each other, in the possibility of truth, the game's won.